I'm a free man. When I joined the synagogue church, I thought I have met a savior. But unfortunately for me, I didn't know I have started my journey into hell. I joined the evangelical class. My performances there took me to Ghana in the 1997 crusade. When I came back from Ghana crusade, the reports T.B. Joshua got about me and my performances there brought me closer to him. And I was advised to join the disciple by his agents. When I joined the disciples, I was surprised at what I met there. It was a concentration camp, but there is no power, no force as strong as brainwash. I was gradually brainwashed into living without eating meat, without eating fish. I was gradually introduced into humiliating people. I was gradually introduced. In fact, imagine such instances like a lady is being accused of committing fornication, which were all lies. And the lady was brought out before all the disciples, naked, and pepper was grinded and mixed with water and inserted into her vagina. She almost went mad. T.B. Joshua would engage all known mind control techniques to keep his disciples in check. Sleep deprivation was his standard and the cruel punishments he meted out for the slightest offenses were calculated to induce fear. Snitching was the order of the day and he had the ability to disorientate the best of men. Disciples dared not converse freely for fear of punishments. Gradually, the disciples would be led into working out his deceptions to fool the public becoming tools in his propaganda machine. I was made a prophet in June 12, 1999 on his birthday. From then, the powers invested in me increased. I became a terror to co-disciples. People run away from me because I will do whatever he asks me to do. Any disciple he asks me to slap, I will slap. We were being caned with koboko, with cow tail, regularly. Without all our bags, we are filled with scars. So this is what we continued. We aided him. People were being tortured. Tortured to some extent that you cannot talk. Suffering and smiling. Before the, before the congregation, you will be smiling. But at the back of the congregation, because you cannot say anything. You have been brainwashed to believe that T.B. Joshua is the Lord. That even if you offend him in this world, you will still meet him in heaven. Prophecies were informations given to him by members, information given to him by workers, disciples. When we get people at the gate, if you have been there before, you will see in the morning, as early as 4 or 5, people will gather at the gate. 4 or 5 a.m., people will gather at the gate. Right at the gate there, we interview people, screen them, they tell us their problems and everything. These are things, those we allow inside, these are things we will take to T.B. Joshua, and that will form the basis of his prophecy. Sometimes we will gather people and ask them to write their problems. They will write their problems and we will carry it to the old site, to one of his prayer grounds and keep it there for him. He will keep reading it. After about two to three months, he will come out, those things he read from those people's problems, he will come to predict them. He will come to prophesy them. People from overseas, the same thing. About the healing, the so-called miracles. Miracles of one, what we call miracle of crippled people. I bought four wheelchairs for T.B. Joshua in the church. What we call miracles of crippled healing, like that of Mr. Maxwell E.J., that wheelchair was bought by me. Maxwell E.J. got drunk, and when he was stepping down from his uh, story building, he fell off and hit his waist. And he had a sprain. When he came to us, we now brainwashed this man that unless he sits on a wheelchair, he will not gain the access to see the man of God. And we brainwashed the whole family. You can imagine how powerful the game of brainwash is. And you see people crying, begging him as if that, that cry, they started, they started from home. Why the show? Why do we, we have to show, show the whole thing? How they are crying, begging him, Papa, please help us. All those things are manipulation. I bought the wheelchairs. That wheelchair that Maxwell used was one of the four wheelchairs I bought. There's a woman we also call Mama Jaye Jaye from a place called Bini in Nigeria. I bought the wheelchair. The wheelchair again for high scent. Well, those, these four wheelchairs were being recycled among all the old people they bring. When they bring you, we will brainwash you to sit on wheelchair. 
are we talking about? What are we talking So many things. What we call cancer. Those things are not cancer. If you want to prove this, in later times, when some Americans came and discovered that those things were not cancers, they started writing against us. And we turned the name. We no longer call them cancer. We call them leg ulcers. Body ulcers. No longer cancer again. Those things you see we bring out there are wounds. Some of them are wounds sustained from or uh, bike driving, so my accident, so my fire bones, so my some gunshots, different kinds of things. And these things are fresh, things that will heal with time. If you come to the emergency in the morning, as early as 5.30, you will see that the main cancer people are being discharged at the gate and brought in those with fresh wounds. The things you call cancer of the breast, it's not cancer of the breast. They are mostly women nursing babies. That thing is it's, 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 it's not cancer, it is abscess. Abscess of the breast, maybe because of the pressure, because of the. That is abscess. I can explain this to you. You have to look at those pictures very well. You will see those things are not cancers, they are abscesses. What if they had also gone to a normal hospital? That thing would be removed. There are so many things we did with TB Joshua. Disciples were not allowed contact with the outside world, and the only television sets tuned to public stations in the synagogue were in his office. Joshua has a morbid hatred for all genuine ministers of the gospel. He will deride, abuse, and curse ministers while watching their TV broadcasts. The ministers in Nigeria, big, big top ministers, David Oyedepo, the redeemed pastor, Pastor Adeboye, Michael Konko, I've seen, I've seen their pictures, whereby it will, it, will, it will ask the prayer warriors to put their pictures under his shoes. You know, these are the spiritual work he normally do. And he will use, he will use the shoes to be walking on his prayer mountain. Sometimes he will be using hammer to hit on these pictures because uh, he doesn't want them to say anything negative against him. He does not want them to say anything about him. Spies with recording devices were sent into various churches to monitor those who opposed T.B. Joshua. Rejected and derided by the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, T.B. swore revenge. Using his doctored videotapes, and stage miracles as his major thrust he convinced the nation that he was bigger than all other churches he used us to pass wrong informations he used us to stamp against against people against other ministries he sends us out into churches load our phones we load our phones up to 10,000 15,000 20,000 inside those churches people will be talking whatever the pastor is talking will be recorded we dial a call when we dial his number the number will be reading in his office and these things will be recorded so many things about tb joshua he is an epitome of deception he is a house of horror first john 2 verse 18 says little children it is the last time and as you have heard that antichrist shall come even now are there many antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. I was a junior prophet with him. I was in Ghana. I went to Ghana because Pastor Kayode, who was there, moved out of the church, established his own Awakeness Chapel, and took away all the members. I went there because TB Joshua sent the first person, Pastor, uh, Prophet Ben, and Prophet Ben could not perform. Prophet Ben was giving outstanding instructions to go there and make sure that Kayode is bundled inside the boot of a vehicle and brought back to Lagos. But when Ben failed, he knew I was the person who could do it. So he sent me to Ghana. When I got there, I tried everything. I got his file from immigration, his original file. I realized that Kayoda have established a, an NGO. He has a church. He's married there. He has two children. So he became, a natural, he became a citizen. He was naturalized. And he has some strong men in his church who guide him, guide him security-wise. So everything I tried failed. I was still fighting this war when Kyle himself started sending texts to members that they should ask TB Joshua what he did to the wife. That his wife, the wife he married in Nigeria, he separated them for about five years. The wife was living with Lola, 
the wife, Lola, Lola Peters, Lola Kayode Peters, was living with T.B. Joshua in uh, disciple quarters. While T.B. Joshua while, while Kayode was living in Ghana alone for five years. More than five years. So Kayode took that opportunity because he knew what T.B. Joshua was doing with the wife. Kayode told everybody that T.B. Joshua pregnanted his wife and sent it, to him, sent it for him to Ghana so that he wanted to prove to the world that T.B. Joshua is not what people think he is. And I was surprised. I came back to Lagos. I told T.B. Joshua, I said, this is what the man is saying. He said, don't mind him. But unfortunately, when I came back again, they said Lola had, Lola Tommy had become big. And surprisingly, one morning, they say, the baby, she had a miscarriage. They aborted the baby. So that the world will not know what T.B. Joshua has done. Today, Lola is living. T.B. Joshua is living. Peter is living. What about how he messes up people? People like Amokachi. Omokati came there with problems. He has some, some, some knee injuries problems. He came there. Instead of T.B. Joshua helping this young man, instead of him praying for him, T.B. Joshua now plotted with us and told us that he wanted to convert Omokati to the lowest disciple among us. And he did it. Omokati never succeeded. When he, took, when he went to one club in America, he could not perform. He came back and he was virtually living in the snuggle church with us. And T.B. Joshua reduced Omokati to a common supermarket attendant. And he was recorded without knowing. T.B. Joshua has made a complete documentation of Omokachi. What about Kanu Anko? Kanu entered in when he had had problem, trying to solve his problems. But you know, he didn't know that he was recorded. And that is what T.B. Joshua has been parading to all great men in the world. That he healed Kanu and Kanu denied. And since he has the vision and the vision, everybody believed him. That was what he used to confuse Amokachi. That's what he used to confuse James Obiora. Even though James Obiora was a bit tough for him. I joined the synagogue church at the age of 30 and by 41 to 42 I wanted to marry and T.B. Joshua said over his dead body I will not marry and I said okay my eyes opened I looked I saw that this man was not whom he said he is when we started this ministry he was telling us that see that any day he start putting the money in his, in the, his money in the bank account that is it God will take away his power any day you start driving a big car, that's the God who take away. But I came back from Ghana one day to meet four jeeps. The house is building in his hometown, over a billion naira have been put in it. This man has committed much havoc. Am I talking about the people he destroyed their lives? He tells people, when people come there with problems, we cancel them, especially the HIV, serious sicknesses. They should not take drugs. They should keep blessing water in the name of the God of TB Joshua. And people did that. And I'm telling you, they died in their thousands. But himself, TB Joshua himself, call me tomorrow, face to face, I'll tell him. He takes drug. He sends our canteen woman, Mama Mike. She will go to a cotton market and buy herbs from herbalists. And we cook. For him, he pours it. Mrs. Godu will buy it. They will prepare it for him and put it in the fridge. He will be drinking it. What a deceitful life! People who have toothache in the disciple in the church, he will tell them, "No, bless water and don't take any drug. Don't go to the hospital." But we have extracted the teeth of more than fifty disciples in the hospital. If any problem, you go to the hospital. But members are dying daily. He has caused much harm to the, this country. He has caused much harm to the whole world. What about those that come in? After he has finished them up, he will send them to their countries and they will die. Is it the people we say we are healing? The Yubo people? The same drug, you will see they display their drugs in their presence. Those drugs are not being thrown away. We pack them in. We look at them. If it is not much, we will search for them in Nigeria or the equivalents. We will mix them and put into the fruit juice they will be taken. If they spend one week in synagogue church when they go back before the next two days the problem will start and when they call to tell us the attack has started again we tell them it is their sin they should confess one of tb joshua's greatest coups against nigerian christianity was the capture of a popular young tele-evangelist called chris oyahilume the disciples recall all details of how tb joshua plotted lured and enticed the minister fooling him completely Matthew 24 verse 24 is for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect what about manipulations what about creating confusion in the Christendom the case of Chris Oyakulume was a sample case 
He gradually tripped to Yekilome to come and visit him. He first put up a call to Yekilome. He put up a call to Yekilome after seeing Yekilome on television. Yekilome picked the call, answered it, and you know, thinking he's a, he's a good gesture, promised to come and visit Tibi Joshua first. And when he came, we organized all journalists, all our journalists, we put camera everywhere, we recorded your Yekilome even up to the last step he made. We want to use it to send the message across to the uh, Nigerian Christian, Christian world. We want to send it to PFN. We want to send it to Khan so that they will know if Tibi Joshua is a demon, why then should people like Chris, whom they recognize, be his friend? TB Joshua courted the Nigerian press and has many hungry news reporters on his payroll. A lot of the reported benevolence is highly exaggerated and the press was often used as a tool for reverse psychology, printing crazy stories to lure people and by sympathy for the synagogue. T.B. Joshua's freakery became so effective that many of the Nigerian elites have become ensnared. From governors to high-level police officers, T.B. has a following that is outstanding. Presidents of nations, multi-millionaires and many international figures are among the list of his victims. James 4.4 Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Second time again, we invited him when we, when we were having what they call the blood of Jesus. That was the time they brought in one man, one, one, one Dutch man, Mr. Westerhoff. The, the man on, 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 on chair, wheelchair, because of the multiple sclerosis he had. Not that this man cannot walk. This man could walk, but he could not walk and stand for a long time. He could walk, but he could not walk for a long time. So that is why he decided to choose to sit on a wheelchair. And this man was never healed. He was still like that. What he walked in the church, and as if he was jumping, was exactly what he did before the first time he came to us. That was the man we used to showcase uh, 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 when Chris came, that was the man we showcased. If you watch the video, you will see it was Chris and T.B. Joshua. T.B. Joshua indirectly discipled Chris because what happened was what he used to do. If, if we are praying, T.B. Joshua will stand by us and believe him to, have, to, 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 to be giving us, strengthen us with power. So that was what he did to Chris. So this was what he packaged and gave to his journalists to send to the world. In conclusion, how did an illiterate half-wit pull off such a grand deception. And I went back to Ghana. I said, well, since things are changing, let me now, at the age of 41 plus, no marrying, because everybody, it's a taboo for you to, nobody, even if you are married, you will be separated with your wife. If you, if you, if you are lucky, if you want to sleep with your wife, he is the person who will tell you when to sleep with your wife. He will tell those in disciples who are married and their wives are living at home and while they are in the quarters, he will tell them when to have sex with their wives, either once or twice in a year. And he will give them pass to go and sleep with their wife and come back the following morning. So if you try that without his permission, you are in trouble. That is tantamount to rebellion. You are rebellious. And you, even you will not. Where will you see your wife to sleep with? Where will you have chance? Nobody is free at a time. Everybody is monitoring everybody. So you have no you have no one minute to, to, to hide. So things changed. If you go to Snagot Church as I'm talking now, you will see women there, you see ladies there who joined him at the age of 15, 13, 14. He disvising all of them. He has been sleeping with all of them. They are now 35, 40. Some of them are 35 and 38. Some are 31. They are not yet married. They are just there for his luxury. He sleeps with them, does anything he likes with them till today. So when I go back to Ghana, I said, no, I need to marry. I met with a young lady. I wanted to marry. She was a journalist that worked with uh, GTV. And she, she was a journalist. She's a reporter. And she worked with also with uh, Savi, the United Nations body. So I met her. We talked and we agreed. The father was uh, the father. The father of the girl was uh, the, the the regional minister of Volta region. A very wealthy family and good girl, educated girl. I saw her and I prayed. I said, okay, I better go home and tell TV Joshua that I've seen somebody I want to marry. When the girl agreed, I came back to Lagos. I told TV Joshua that I want to marry. 
heaven was let loose. Immediately, somebody else was sent to go and replace me in Ghana while I was in 